My best friend in high school was a figure skater, and sometimes I'd go to the rink with her and watch her twirl around. She'd try to get me to come out on the ice with her, but I never would. I don't know how to stop, and I was afraid that if I fell, someone might skate over my hand, and I'd lose a couple of fingers and a lot of blood. So I would, I would watch rinkside, shivering on the bench, drinking hot cocoa. I also spent some years in Canada, where I'd wished I'd known a hundred words for snow, because you need them to describe the world around you there. But one of the coldest places I've ever been is infertility, which borders the country of unrequited love. If you're trying to get pregnant and can't, it becomes almost unbearable to leave the house because every woman you see will be pregnant or will have just given birth. But sometimes advanced medical technology can be your ticket out of that barren place. In vitro fertilization requires supersizing your ovaries to produce a bumper crop of eggs, which are then surgically harvested, placed in a Petri dish, injected with sperm, grown out into embryos, which are put in your uterus, and if one sticks, you are pregnant. You spend a lot of time waiting alone in a small, cold exam room with your underpants off and a blue paper towel on your lap. You spend a lot of time with your feet in stirrups, being really embarrassed or mentally detaching from it all. The clinic had pictures of babies everywhere, <laughs> babies they had made, mostly twins and triplets. <laughs> uh, the nurse held up a needle like the one that I would use to shoot myself up with hormones every day for weeks on end as my fertility process was hijacked. The needle was about two inches long. <laughs> I asked, how far does that have to go in? And she said, all the way. <laughs> and I broke down in tears, but I did it. The evening before I was to go in for the egg harvesting procedure, my parents took me out for Thai food. And as I'm forking some overly sweet and eggy pad thai noodles into my mouth, my dad asks, so, how do they go in? Laparoscopically? <laughs> and then he adds, he adds, that means through the belly button. <laughs> now, my family talks about diseases and disasters all the time. At the dinner table, we'll fling around medical jargon and worst case scenarios. I have ended up a hypochondriacal scaredy cat, go figure. But anyway, I am chewing my pod thai noodles, and I'm not answering my dad, partly because the fact of the matter is the egg harvesting procedure doesn't go in laparoscopically, they go in through my vagina, and I really don't want to talk about my vagina with my dad. <laughs> but he repeats his question. <laughs> so I say, no dad, they go in through my vagina, please pass the curry. <laughs> um, the next day, I go into the clinic to have my eggs scooped out, and the doctor announces that he is wearing his lucky socks. <laughs> and I hope that he is also wearing his competent surgeon fingers. <laughs> yeah. There's a really big framed oil painting of a green and purple sperm hanging on the wall. And this painting is the last thing I see as they put me under. Later, as I'm stumbling to the door, still stoned on whatever sedative I've been given, the doctor mentions that the embryologist whose job it is to pluck the good-looking sperms and squirt them into the good-looking eggs is in Disneyland, <laughs> really. So he won't be able to perform this time-critical maneuver. However, the doctor says, I'm lucky because his wife, the doctor's own wife, Antoinette, <laughs> really, who, um, who rarely does this kind of thing anymore, is willing to be my embryologist. <laughs> now, I want somebody who does this kind of thing all the time for a job. But he's in Disneyland, and 
Antoinette is here. None of it works. Not, not the lucky socks, not the bad sperm art, not Antoinette. So I go to a different clinic. A slicker, more corporate, more expensive, more anonymous place. I'm given a binder filled with contracts and schedules. And I go through the entire rigmarole again. The constant shooting up of hormones, the blue paper towels, the cold KY jelly, the poking and the prodding. And I am not sure how this happens, but again, the evening before an egg harvesting procedure, <laughs> my parents take me out for Thai food. <laughs> Different restaurant, same food, we always order the pod thai. And again, my dad asks, so, do they go in laparoscopically? <laughs> that means through the belly button. <laughs> and this time, I'm cool with it. And I just say, no dad, they go in through my vagina. Which is how they go in. <laughs> Which is how they go in, again. <laughs> but this time, something works, and my husband and I end up with a beautiful, warm child. But this story is not about that child. It's about those left out in the cold. You see, the clinic had harvested a lot of eggs from me. There were extra embryos. Embryos that are saved in a freezer somewhere here in Seattle. For almost seven years, I have been paying quarterly for their storage, even though I have no intention of ever getting pregnant again. I just can't bring myself to sign the piece of paper that would have those embryos destroyed. And sometimes I imagine my kids on ice, those tiny frozen souls shivering their teeth chattering, their lips blue, as they skate around their Petri dish rink, waiting for their time to come. Thank you.